Before we get yeah. into that, if you can mm -hmm. let the people know uh, what's your name, a little bit about yourself. Right. So I'm Lauren. A lot of people say Lauren Michelle, Lauren Michelle, which is kind of funny because that's like what my mom would say when I'm in trouble. But now this is like kind of my name in Berlin. Wow. So, you <laughs> so maybe it. I came here being in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, it's it's been troubling ever since. No, I'm just kidding. But um, but yeah, so people refer to me as Lauren Michelle, but it's literally only my middle name. Mm. Um, but I think something about surnames here feel like kind of intimate, even though it's on like the the letterbox and all this stuff. Like it just feels more like, oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't need to know all that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I go by Lauren Michelle. Okay, yeah. Lauren Michelle. All right. Mm -hmm. And um you've been you live here in Berlin and mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been in Berlin for? Um two and a half years and in December it will be my third year. Ah, congrats. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks. And like a lot of other people, um, you know, they celebrate like every year. Like I, I've even seen you talk about it, like yeah. I'm a year in, you know, it's something to like have a conversation piece around like because mm -hmm. things brought us here for a reason and so it's kind of cool that this is a city that celebrates how long you've made it <laughs> yeah but it also shows you that this is a city unlike others because i don't recall being like i'm three years into london four years into london you know like <laughs> but in berlin you're like I made it. I'm almost at my third year, you know? Yeah, that winter. I mean, you know, every time you survive and get past it, you're like, oh my, I can't believe I made it through. This is crazy. And that's just one component. Right. Well, I mean, there's so many yeah. other components. Yeah. So what brought you to Berlin? Um, well, in a cheesy way, like my Instagram handle is like begin again in Berlin. Mm. But honestly, it's because I decided uh to begin again in Berlin. Like I've felt like this is a city with such um rebirth mm -hmm. and uh, self-discovery and and hurt and pain and there's like a lot of beauty you know still all amongst the city of uh, of a city that has seen the world at its worst mm. and so i felt like um i was kind of all of a sudden at my worst and i wanted to be in a environment that was encouraging of a rebirth that like it will never get as bad as it once was. And so I put myself on a plane with my dog and I literally left everything behind, like, like three categories, soul, like sell, um, uh, donate or, or trash. Wow. Like rubbish. And, and I was just like, I just set my sights on, um, getting here for my rebirth. And, um, and yeah, now I'm the troubled Lauren Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not, okay. Yeah. So that's why. And, uh, and so where are you from originally? Cause I hear, mm. I'm hearing some accents, different <laughs> accents here and there. I think we talked about this before, but mm. just to let the people know, like, where are you from? Like originally? Right. Right. So <laughs> mm -hmm. the age old question every day, all day, you know, like even with people that know you and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you put, like a third country kid, is that how it's called? Third culture. But I mean, third hey, you know, I mean, if you want to go by countries, you know, that too. <laughs> but yeah. Let's count. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I'm a third culture kid through and through. So I really finally resonated with that description. And I was like, I feel seen ah. because it's always so hard to describe. Like, I come from many things of many backgrounds as well, ethnically. Um, and then culturally, it's informed me with how I speak and so forth. So I was born in Germany. Um, so I've also began again. Like I'm back. Like bitch is back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm literally back. Um, and then only when things get weird, when people like either myself or others are like, are you like also from here? You know, that then that question comes in. And actually, technically, I do have German ancestry. But only one time did I say that, like, to someone. I don't ever identify as being a Deutsch person, like, to mm. be honest, uh, even though it's, like, technically in my blood. Mm -hmm. um, and even saying it that one time was, like, weird. It was like, what am I doing tonight? Like, why was I like, yeah, actually, in me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what? And I was like, oh, let's never do that again. <laughs> um, uh, so born here, raised in America. Um, so I'm also 
American. My family is probably just like on the edge of their seats. Like, you better say it. You better say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I moved back abroad to Europe once I was quite young, like 20. Mm -hmm. So for the past, uh, maybe even a bit earlier than that, maybe like 19 or something like this. Uh, so for the past like 10 years, yes, I'm getting older now because <laughs> um, I'm now in my 30s. I've been on this side of the pond for most of that time. Mm. Um, and so then with that comes, well, where did the, those time periods, those countries, those cultures inform me? So then I say also London, like shaped me, informed me where I spent most of my time in Europe um, with bits and bobs in between other countries in between. Wow. So yeah, so now I can say it like real quick because I'm like prepared for this kind of question every day. Ah, okay. Because every day I'm hustling and every day I'm saying, born in Germany, raised in America, spent most of my time in London. And then it just like shuts, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shuts like, it down a little bit. Like, kind huh, of. <laughs> okay, so now how does that work? Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so that's that's three distinct uh, different cultures there. Um, mm -hmm. And like, so you were born here in Germany and mm -hmm. how long were you in Germany for when you was young really young mm. um like baby um like i do have like early early like baby memories kind of thing because mm -hmm. my my mom's like your memory is amazing i'm like thanks mom <laughs> <laughs> um but i just she believes i have like a photographic memory i just i'm really uh in tune with like what i'm seeing what i'm sensing and i've just always been like this kind of person that like captures a moment in time and like just lets it resonate so even mm. then i remember like being like on the bike and stuff like this um like as you see here with all the little kids and oh, everything wow. and i'm like oh that's kind of freaky to kind of remember things yeah. like this um and then of course the rest um the things are told to me mm -hmm. you know and then that's when you like try to piece together what it could have been like when you were a child uh for the things that i don't remember so really young and then I um, went into like more of a privatized department of the defense schools growing up in America. Mm. So it was like really strict, but it was like good for me. And then I um, continued more schooling eventually then back in Europe and Spain. Mm. Uh, dabbled in some, some bits in Germany, but that wasn't really my story then. And then London. Wow. So yeah. So I when you said, your question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sorry. yeah, no, there's a lot to unpack there. So you said Department of Defense school you went to. Oh yeah. You know, so is that like is that like we're, international we're school? There. Or is there like a difference in between the two? So I remember literally being like a, I don't know, it was too old to have this realization hmm. and be like, huh? When my dad described it to like a friend about my upbringings in the kind of school systems that I was in, mm -hmm. because. I didn't know any different. And I remember the distinction being like, this is my life until they put me in public school. Mm. Hearing my dad not that long ago, just a few years ago, describe the rigor and the like categorization of the type of schooling that I had. Mm -hmm. I was like, it all makes sense now. <laughs> I didn't know that it was like that. So wow. like we would, um, like if you were in trouble, you mm -hmm. were in trouble with the generals in the military. Well, okay, so this is this is definitely a different international mm -hmm. school. This is like some real army, like mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So, would you would you any part of your family in this? Like, yeah, okay, my dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, your dad. Yeah. So I didn't know there's a special school for mm -hmm. children of people who are not. You know, wow. I know. Honestly, I didn't know either. I knew, I knew what I knew when I was growing up that mm -hmm. I was just in this really strict school. Right. But when they were like, we're going to introduce you to the civilian world. I'm like, what's that? They're like, the thing for ever, like everyone, not like the others, nothing yeah. like this, but like anyone that doesn't have that affiliation and they're right. not in these kind of specialty militarized schools, just everyone else, all the other kids, like you're yeah. going to go in there now. And I was like, wow. so then where have I been? I didn't, I didn't know any different, right? Mm. Growing up, I thought this was the kind of schooling that everyone got. Mm -hmm. Until I saw that it was not at all what everyone was getting. And I hated public school and it was awful. Wow. I mean, so yeah. what, what was like some of the positive, what was some of like the positive moments you um, remember 
going to like the Department of Defense schools. Mm-hmm. Well, without it sounding like, mm, I don't want this in any way at all to sound pretentious, and I don't want it to sound boastful. Um, but I remember being the star student every month. Star. <laughs> yeah, flex. Are you serious? Yeah, bring that inner child out. So flex on that. Flex. Yeah, flex on that. You serious? Star child. We all wanted to be a star child. <laughs> We can't be no more because we're grown people, but like, yo, flex. Yeah, that is something. Oh, thank you. Yeah, flex that. Yeah, flex That's that uh, That key uh, childhood memory. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> I just remember even mm. like, I'm a little girl, right? Mm. And being like, again? Like, people are going to start to hate me. I remember thinking this. Like, they would be like, this month, drum roll, Lauren. Yeah. Next month drum roll now we're in this other month drum roll and i'm like oh shoot so i was even picking up on like in the maybe like low-key the real world you could have a target on your back wow <laughs> and it's even happening in this in the school like but in this setting it just it also informed me of like just teachers that were there and cared and listened and were so connected to your parents and like the Mm. Ooh, you know again there's no acting out and if you do you're in trouble with like a military structure and order wow. so it's can be quite intimidating but i just like was like rose to this occasion and i freaking loved it mm. and i loved also having that close connection living on a military base growing up at the time it was in the savannah area so it was like beach on the weekends and then the field trips were in my backyard how cool wow. because my mom would put together this big production and the teachers were just like i just this is so great like i love everything and then like next month i'd be star student again <laughs> so uh, like, okay <laughs> so you, there's some guilt because you actually okay so there's some yeah there's some influences that were there <laughs> yeah, they're, that, they're uh, so, i mean you yeah. game the system hey look don't be mad at the game, <laughs> game yeah. the system. but mm. i swear even though the way i just told it made it sound like it was like there's a little rig in there and my mom made sure she did the right things. But I honestly, even from a young age, was obsessed with learning and still am in education. So it also was being justified that I was like soaking it all up, like mm-hmm. anything that they taught us and like proving like my knowledge now that of the thing that they just taught me. Mm. So, so every time I was really working my little tush off. Right. To be a star student. And then my family would be like, so now we're going to have a carnival party and mm-hmm. it's your field trip. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So like, yeah, it worked on both ends. You yeah, know, you know, you know how to ends. play the system and you was good, <laughs> you know, as a star in the system. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, double. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. What? Oh, you, you got the game on lock. All right. Oh, check you out. All right. Until I did it, until public school came in and yeah. I was like, oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Public school like, we can't four stars here. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> you just get a check mark and go on a piece of paper. <laughs> exactly. You you just get a, I'm not going to talk to you. Uh, you're not going to be in trouble. That's what you're. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, where's the accountability in this? The like freaking general needs to know about these <laughs> like, bad kids. <laughs> like general, I need to go to happy hour uh, after work. So you need to wrap this up. <laughs> the general is these matas uh, <laughs> around the corner. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was that was that bit. Wow. Okay, yeah. so you was in there and um, Department of Defense schools, mm-hmm. and how long you was in there for? Like, you was in there for a while. Or? Honest, actually, like <laughs> all of like pre K. Oh, actually, so my mom taught me. Um, my mom taught me before I went to preschool, mm-hmm. and actually. Don't think I'm flexing again. This is just like kind of crazy Look, to actually you just, say you out just loud. Flex all, you don't, just you, you flex. You. It's not even on purpose. <laughs> just let it flow. That's it, yo. You flex. You flex. It is what it is. Sometimes you just reach for something. You like, oh, is that flexing? Right? You know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Like, oh, is that? I'm sorry. I got you know my muscle just popped out there. It popped through my shirt. Hey, you. Like my my dog staring at me. Like, there you go. Even your dog knows you flexing. Has yeah. she been working out? Yeah, dog. Dog. I'm just I'm just here to watch you flex. That's all. I'm your, I'm your security. You know, I'm the flex security. He really is. He's like, yeah. He's just looking at you. Look at oh that. Oh my god. I mm, see. Look at. That's funny. So I um basically okay. How do I answer this? I went to university as a baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, you know, that that is a flex now. Um so <laughs> Wait, you went. To, I know you went to university Look. as a baby. Please explain this. This is crazy. I told you, star student. <laughs> I told you I worked for that shit. Yeah, this now this is into servant level. This ain't no star. This is now like you know legally servant. Like, all right, who are you? What? <laughs> but but of course, there's there's a normal um, normality to this or mm-hmm. what I'm about to say. And um, so right after Germany, um, I was like the the child that was born in Germany and like no no other uh family member in my family at the time were born ne- in Germany necessarily I could be wrong because actually one thing I did want to mention when they were here uh they were here for like three four years many family members were here mm. now I'm solo YOLO with my pup ah. but it was like grandma was always over like aunts and uncles and I'm like literally that would have been so nice now like wow. multiple aunts and multiple like uncles and cousins and like a whole kind of family in Germany. Yeah. Um, and then the, everyone left eventually. Um, this also did correlate to when the wall fell, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, but now I'm back with the wall gone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, wow. But um, no one else followed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we so, put our time in. Yeah. yeah. So just mentioning that a little bit. So after Germany, uh, my mom is from Kentucky mm-hmm. and my dad is more or less from Tennessee, but military. So he's been everywhere and from also everywhere. And they were like, we need to like maybe put our little girl in school. I don't really know, of course. And my mom's like, I'm going to teach her. So my mom taught me like so much stuff before wow. school started. And I loved that. And I remember that so distinctly. And I would go visit her family farms and the horses my grandfather was like here's your horse now and i'm like i love this life i'm a child and i'm a cowgirl nothing could be better wow that's <laughs> great really yeah and my mom's like we can't keep that because we don't have a farm and we're, we're we have a normal house in, a, in the suburbs we're not keeping a horse uh-huh. but you can let her think you have this horse right so it's like i had a horse <laughs> in quotes and then naturally when then my mom's like okay but school hmm once she figured out she didn't really want to teach me all the rest Mm. if she wasn't on this like homeschool track like that's a choice she was like okay now i'm gonna put her in the system Mm -hmm. they decided to put me into the system of the university of kentucky wow and that was extraordinary really Mm -hmm. and my dad was a professor at the time and i got this low-key star student treatment because oh. he would take me on lunch breaks and i didn't have to do nap time with everyone else i would go I would <laughs> yo you had a very interesting childhood yo what the, okay yeah you star yeah that's a that's star student lifestyle right there yeah. you could even be regular if you wanted to are you serious <laughs> yes i'm dead wow like i remember like they gave me like a butterfly and i was supposed to like sit on a butterfly and be like a good little girl I was always a good little girl, but I would be like on that butterfly, just waiting until my dad can pick me up and be like, all right, like, so we're going to bounce. We're going to go to Fazoli's, this Italian restaurant and like have a lunch, grab a cocktail. I'm like a baby or like a toddler. Wow. I mean, you wasn't drinking cocktails. What no. you? Were, okay. Did you have like a baby cocktail? No tail. <laughs> but son, into a coffee cup. Here you go, kid. Yeah. You know, this one's a little strong, so make sure you sip it slow. <laughs> And then I'd come back and I was like, they're still napping? Jesus, it's time to go. Dad, why don't you just go ahead and take me home? <laughs> oh, I'm wow. done for the day. <laughs> oh, so you had a different life right it there. It was a different life. Wow. And yeah, and then my mom would drive me to uh, the farm and get to spend time with my grandparents and the horse that was mine. <laughs> this, is real, this is real Southern living right here. Okay, yeah, I'm learning a lot too as I'm here. And I'm like, oh, there's some real Southern a horse and everything. Yeah, okay. Kentucky. Kentucky, right. Mm-hmm. It, that, that's still considered the South, right? Or we consider that Midwest now. I don't know. It's middle grounds because of the Civil War mm-hmm. and every affiliation in the South. But technically, it was a border neutral zone and it's kind of up North. What? It's weird. It's kind because of because of that Mason Dixon line yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, ah, exactly. okay. Yeah. Interesting. Ah, yeah. so but all right, so like you north and south a little bit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. okay. So when you made the transition now from uh the Department of Defense uh school you went to mm-hmm. to now public school, what was like the big shift for you during that transition time? So to get back to that question and then one that you asked me previously around how old I was, 
I was too old. I was too old to be just getting into a new system. Mm. I was like third grade, actually. Third grade. Third grade. And that's old for standards of like the kids that like started pre-K together, started, let's back it up. They started daycare together. Mm. So third grade is like, who does she think she is rocking up? Midway through the year as well. We I started it in December. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like about to be Christmas break. And then I'm like, <laughs> and the teacher's like, there's a new one. And I'm like, yeah, what's this? What's this? And everyone was literal. It wasn't this like, oh my God, that's cool. Like, welcome. Like, we'll show you the ropes. No, no, no. Mm. It was like, what are what what are you doing here? Who are you? Where did you come from? What is happening? Mm, that's public school for you right there. Yeah. Conquer alien yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. And shout out to the girls that just like shaped my then experience and like touched my heart. The three girls that like talked to me probably like second day, maybe even first day, mm. um, became my best friends. Wow. And everybody else. On the shit list. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is public school. Public school, that it, it wouldn't be public school unless there's some people that you had some beef with a little bit. Growing up. That's just public school behavior. It's, Any school, yeah. Yeah. It's just weird, though, because they're like, you're the new girl, so we're going to hate you. Yeah. What? You're, oh, so this is new? T- oh, this is so crazy. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that, that's such a comic. I went to public school, and that's like right. common. Yeah. Right. It's where you're like, oh, oh, it's like this. Like, yeah. there's nothing else. It's just because I'm new. Yeah. Oh, I didn't belong in that pack before. And they're, they're, that's when they would even tell me, like, we went to daycare together. Like, I was, like, missing out. But I'm like, bitch, I was in college. <laughs> oh, you think you're better than us? I was in freaking university, okay? <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, was it, like, yeah. a rough school? Was it, like a, like, a, you know, was it rough? Was it I Like, what kind of? It was a good, <laughs> it was, it made the newspapers of, like, this is going to be state of the art, all the money that we're putting into it. And my heart. Family literally built a whole ass house, Mm -hmm. three floors just to be near this school because they were like, we're going to like not live anywhere near the military base anymore. We're going to move into a normal neighborhood. Mm. We're going to have a normal life and we're going to go to this like good school that's like made the papers. Wow. (laughs) Newspapers. Okay. So they, okay. So even with that too, it wasn't just a shift to this, uh, this, you know, this, Department of Defense School into right. this uh, public school, but also your family moved to a different location. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ooh. So that must have been also a shock too, having a new neighborhood, new kids, friends, and everything that you had to deal with. Absolutely. Wow. Always like saying goodbye to the best friends that you make, just being in a constant state of saying goodbye. Yeah. And that also informed me as to why I've lived in as many countries as I have, because it's like, eventually it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you become that person that then feels this angst to need to say goodbye and like keep it moving. Mm. Even though that was the very thing that made you sad, like your whole life is being like, no, when will <laughs> I see you. And then after a certain amount of years, there's this like thing that happens to you and you're like, Oh, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> gotta go. Yeah. It's like, Hey, sorry. I have parents. They, have, they want better for me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Apologize. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's what that was like. Um, I also had special treatment from the teacher that I absolutely love and adore for, to this day. Her name is Miss Garner from the third grade. And I just felt so protected by her. And that was what I actually needed because she could probably sense like, oh, she's about to be with the wolves, you know? Mm. So she would just kind of like have me to her side and be like, Lauren, like, Lauren, like this. And like, I'm going to show you and like this. And my family was just like, thank you. We love you for this. Like she came from something different and we really appreciate that extra attention you're sharing, you're giving her. Mm -hmm. And she gave me so much beauty and so much like the knack to want to learn even more. That I was like, all I want to do is be her growing up. And I like wanted to literally be a teacher just like her. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you had the right support and everything. Mm -hmm. And when you was there, so at least you had the support, which is, which Mm -hmm. is good to hear. 
which is the teacher, which makes it even more where you have a little arrow pointed towards you. That oh, like, teacher's pet. Yeah, <laughs> teacher's pet. Yeah. So where they're like, she's got protection from the source. That would do it. That would do you it. And the teacher's pet. Honey. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. I was like, oh, yeah, this didn't look good, did it? Yeah, that <laughs> uh, that that would do it. You you find out like later on the back end, like, oh, this is not good for the teacher <laughs> to be like me. Uh, this is not good. I should be unliked, actually. <laughs> yeah, literally. Ah. Yeah. So, OK, mm-hmm. so then um, she was there or so. Um, I'm assuming it was like, you know, maybe standard. Well, after you got through the initial rough points, mm-hmm. that public school was probably like, you know, all right. So then. I guess the biggest jump that is still coming to mind is that when you move from America to London, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, how, like around, like, where were you in life when you moved from America to London? Well, I can't even actually answer that quite yet because I moved to Spain first on my own. Spain. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So Spain. Yeah. So you moved from, that's the first country you came, you went to. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. what brought you to Spain? So at the time, actually, I was feeling in my heart that I wanted to be in London or in Germany, like back where it all began. And London, because that's always been also like a bit of my obsession growing up, Mm. you know, the culture that like most people are like, oh, my God, just the Eiffel Tower is so dreamy. And I was like, but Big Ben from a little girl. And I was so obsessed. And and then it didn't help that my dad would be like my favorite place out of everywhere that he's lived. He's lived in even South Korea. He's oh, like, wow. London. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then Gotta my mom it. would be like, I found out I was pregnant with you in London. So everything just was like, Jesus, I need to be there, clearly. Yeah. Um, and I was studying psychology as well. Mm. But actually, the birthplace of psychology, psychology is here in Germany. Mm. So then I was like, what do I do? What do I do? Um, oh, wow. And I had a teacher be like, you should study in either London or Germany. And I was like, let's, let's do this. Mm. But then my Spanish teacher was like, wait, you're the best candidate to go and live in Spain to learn the language. And I was like, I feel like I'm one of the worst in the class Hmm. with Spanish. So I think I'm going to choose those other routes. You know, the the London German route is like that. I like what they were saying. And she's like, no, no, no. You would welcome the challenge and you would really take to like, learning and really good like probably you'd probably get quite good if you lived there and i was like and it's like not in a bougie way of being like i don't want to move to spain not like this Mm -hmm. but more of like i was fearful of being like sent on a mission Mm -hmm. to like be better at speaking spanish because the teacher believed in me but my mindset was like i want to study psychology and philosophy and like things that would be held at the uh, Cambridge library. And I was like, whoa, 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 this is putting a, a damper, you right. know, on like different path, different path. Wow. To only take classes in Spanish. Oh, different things. Yeah. Different, that's very different. different. So she was like, well, we're going to give you a scholarship and we're going to send you there. And y- you will have like you know you'll be paid for and then you're like okay i can't like deny that actually you're like okay, that's so. very good well, let's look at the flights right yeah <laughs> and um and the most beautiful thing i'll never forget to this day is when i told my family they were really supportive about it and then it was choosing which part of spain which eventually i settled on malaga um they actually booked me tickets straight from at the time atlanta georgia to germany because they knew that I really still wanted to be there. Mm. I wanted to like see where Hegel and and Marx like all I just I was studying that for so long that I just they felt they knew I wouldn't be satisfied unless I was there. Mm. And like that was my first entry point. It would to be now I'm back in Germany for my first time as an adult. Um, and that just literally made me like cry and cry and cry. I couldn't believe that they bought me a whole ticket with Luz Tomza to go to Germany first. Wow. And then from there, of course, like I got to Spain, Mm -hmm. but it was like, that was everything that like my family listened to me. They like totally understood where my heart was. Okay. So let's talk about that then from, because I mean, so then Germany technically was the first place then. Yeah, actually. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. um, 
how was that when you first traveled? Because I mean, Germany, you know, as you mentioned, has like a lot of things involved with it, right? Like a lot of history has started here. Mm -hmm. A lot of like, um, you know, psychology, a lot mm -hmm. of, so, um, I don't know, sociology, but a lot of psychology, Karl Marx, uh, Jung, all mm -hmm. these other people. And I'm kind of curious, like, what was the first city you came to in Germany? <laughs> Honestly, this doesn't even feel real. To this day, I'm like, was that a dream? Honest truth. Mm. It was Frankfurt. And so it was direct flight, um, Lutanza, so international. Mm -hmm. My first international from Germany was being born here and as a baby with a passport, with a baby photo. And everyone's like, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming to America. Like, because I was only here. Wow. My world began here. So it was so weird now having a passport, getting a passport or already, of course, I, I did, I already have one. So my family is quite international. But um, getting like an updated passport, not, you know, not like Lauren and young girls pass mm -hmm. to then go back to Frankfurt where they process lots of paperwork anyways for children that are born in Germany to American parents. Oh, wow. So it was like this weird reversal and being like, oh my God. So it was to Frankfurt mm -hmm. and I got picked up by our old German neighbors. Wow. We had German neighbors that my family just adored and we were all obsessed with and they got to finally carry out the rest of the culture that they missed and mm -hmm. the things that they got to have while it's living in Germany, but in Georgia, which is ironic. And and so they picked me up from the airport because her husband, the wife, the husband, uh, works for Lutanza. Mm -hmm. And so, so they were things. like, welcome home. Like, literally welcome home. And we're going to show you all home. We have a whole little thing set up in the garden for you. And, and I just remember being like, it's been so long, you know, like proper university and everything. Like, I'm like 19, 20. What does she look like right now? What does she look like? She's like blonde. I remember that. Always a good tan. Like a lot of tan. And then I'm like, her all the Germans right now? Because it it's like late summer. <laughs> oh, she, oh she, at least you came at the right time, too. <laughs> yeah, you came in the winter time. I've been like, woof, oh, this is not the Germany I remember. <laughs> yeah. Get me out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God. And then it just that kismic feeling of being like, well, she know who I am, but you know what I look like. And it really did take a while to find each other. And then when we did, she put me in her car and I had an experience of proper jet lag in my adult life. Mm. I've had like not too terribly long of flights. Maybe mm. the longest flight as an adult was like six hours or something, but not mm. like, you know, across a continent. You right. would go to like, I would be going to like other countries, like, around america and so forth so this is my first time on my own to europe mm. and i'm experiencing jet lag while as she's on the autobahn and she's flying and i and i like my skin is like flapping back in the wind and i'm like i just it didn't even feel real i was like huh huh what is this i've only heard about this wait <laughs> is this actually real just she floored it, right? Wow. No speed limit on these parts. And I, yeah. So then we get to her house and then she's like, plum cake? I'm like, I didn't even know you can make a cake out of plums. Everything just felt like I was like having this outer body experience. Oh, so you had a lot going on. I was like, oh my God. And then they're showing me this like chair that's like only in Germany. And it's this like, beach chair thing that turns into a table that turns into a bed and they're at the beaches uh the baltic regions and in germany even at some of the pubs and stuff mm -hmm. i've never seen one before she had one in her backyard mm. my mind was blown i was like what's happening and they were like the engineering on this chair sit down feel this ah oh my god amazing whoa ah! i'm <laughs> so jet lagged i'm like what wait is this real Oh, so yeah. Wow. So you was taking a lot of things in. There's so many moments that were happening. And you traveled alone. By your, this is your first time traveling alone? Yeah. And how, like, how'd well, you... Okay. Alone internationally. Alone internationally. Yeah. So how was that? Because I, I feel like that's a thing that not too many people do travel alone and travel yeah. alone internationally. Like, do you yeah. remember, like, how you felt and how that was for you when you first traveled alone from 
what Atlanta or Georgia or Tennessee at the time? No, Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So from Atlanta at the time to uh, to Germany. Mm, that part's a bit more blurry. Yeah, it's probably a lot of jet lag. Yeah, <laughs> the jet lag. Uh, I just remember just like elements of it being surreal, mm. of being like told about being a young, 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 young girl, only being in Germany. That was my only like presence in the world. Then going to America. So it just felt like, whoa, I'm making this reverse journey. Mm. Being like now I'm like a person with like, you know, proper informed mind. And I, I know things now and I can like recognize my surroundings properly. Um, and I'm going back like what and also to a city that i wouldn't have remembered as a baby i would not have remembered frankfurt right at all. of course not never i was actually born in Gießen, so like not even frankfurt and where's that Gießen? not too far from frankfurt okay. also near a city named castle um it's i always grew up calling it like a village but it is a city like a little city oh okay i mean it's, <laughs> it has a village name but uh all right <laughs> yeah, it does. It sound like one. Yeah. Oh, so I don't wow. really remember that much, but I just, I was back. And wow. Actually, mm. I do remember being told the second I landed, the border control, he literally said, welcome back. He, I remember, I remember that being like earth shattering. Yeah. Because he literally looked at my US passport and it says, you know, where you're born for everyone. And this says geese in Germany, as it does. It will always say this, because that's where I was born. And he was like, welcome back. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, I'm back. Wow. And now I'm back again. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so, because um, you was born in Germany, so did you have like a German passport or something? Or like, was it like also, you know? Not at the time, because my parents always say that they kind of had to make a rush decision and they were like, yeah, we're both American. And they were like, yeah, this is easier. Just like, boom, register her as an American. Boom, oh, boom, boom. Okay. But then there was like, oh, she could have decided. And then I didn't know I could have decided. And like, I can't fault my parents for that because they weren't thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was like, oh, but now she would have to choose. There was that forever choose between being american and german and then that was like literally until just recently where now i no longer have to denounce a citizenship and i can officially be dual nice and so that's my next path in in life <laughs> <laughs> yeah have that balance. journey <laughs> you know either side you know i mean america is in some you know it's, it's interesting out there so far that's yeah. a whole Different thing. Yeah. So you was out there in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the time, you're really now exploring some things out there. Mm -hmm. So how long you was there for? You was there for a while? Like when you visited or was it only for like, you know? I actually can't really remember, to be honest. But the thing that I didn't mention is I got to then meet up with my boyfriend. No. Nah, <laughs> okay. At the time. Okay. X now. Okay, an X. Okay, this is an X. Okay. But a boyfriend at the time, you know. Right. Um, And he got his scholarship to Heidelberg Universität. And I loved that for him. And that's how I got to know Heidelberg. So my journey really was not really going to be in Frankfurt. It was going to be in Heidelberg. And mm. that's where, that's where everything kind of took off. And then I thought, oh, shoot, I've got to er, put a stop to this. <laughs> I've right. got to go to Spain. <laughs> and I was like, no, because I loved, it was for everything that I wanted in Germany. Right. I, his flat was right next to Young, which is like crazy. Like, or it was like Heigl. Heigl. Right. His flat literally was where like Heigl had like written a lot of his like philosophical doctrines. And like, and then th there was something else near him as well in Heidelberg where like, psychology was born and i just remember being like this is like literally what i wanted this right. is like absolutely where i want to be where i want to stay and i love this for you that you're going to study here oh my god um and there's a castle <laughs> i mean yeah. you know it's always gonna be a fun time when there's a castle in the place mm -hmm. right yeah wow. but i am grateful super grateful for that opportunity to then have been sent to spain and my spanish did get better 
it was getting good. And then Lauren's back on the road again. <laughs> back on the road. And now you're going back, you went back on the road to London from there. Yeah. So then I um, was constantly, anytime I was living in Spain, if we got like a proper break, because I was studying, um, I would go to London. Of course, because mm. you already remember my whole like, but, 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 but I want to be there in Germany and like, ah! <laughs> and so I would just use that opportunity to go, uh, to go to London. Other people, maybe they were going to Barcelona. I didn't do Barcelona. Other people also did Morocco. I didn't do Morocco. I chose to go back to Germany and London and maybe I'm crazy, but I kept doing that back and forth. So then that was shaping me. And then I told my dad, I'm just going to finish out here. And I was almost done with my four year university degree in honors psychology. And he said, you're what now? <laughs> oh, You're not giving this up just to like only stay there. Right. You have to finish this. Like you're literally like a, a few months out from like getting the degree. Whatever they have to do, they have to do it. But you've got to get back. And I was like, I think London's calling. <laughs> so you like. So you dropped out or? I did not. I finished everyone. Okay, you finished. Okay. I came back, finished, did the did the ceremony, got the degree. And the first thing that I did when anyone said, what do you want for your graduation? Mm -hmm. Money. <laughs> and that was to get my flight to go then to London. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you went on to London. Okay. So from there you went to London. And when you was out in London, um, London is a big place. You know, mm -hmm. I just came back from London. I always I know, forget. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And London is so big. I keep on forgetting how big it is. Like mm -hmm. every time I travel, I think it's like the size of New York City. I don't know mm -hmm. if it is or not, but it feels so much bigger. Mm -hmm. So what part of London did you end up going to first when you eventually made that decision to go? Mm. Now, that was actually, I remember that being a weird feeling, to be honest, because I was like walking the streets in London. I was supposed to be in a group of women, but they were like getting sick and dropping off like hot flies. So then it was like me being solo YOLO. And this was in central London. Cause mm. I remember being like, well, I'm gonna see that play. I'm gonna go to that pub. I'm gonna see this thing. And, and I remember my experience primarily being on my own. Wow. And it felt at first kind of sickening <laughs> because I was like, oh my God, this feels like, an outer body territory <laughs> but then i guess little little did i know everything everything happens for a reason mm. and if i didn't get that like that alone time as it were that self-reflection and discovery um then maybe i would have never known that i could make that move on my own and then like seemingly never turn back mm. so once london really happened in my life it was like game over. It was like, this is my home now. Everything was like, everything was, it was going. It was my new life. I was so happy. So you knew already, but when you went there, that like, hey, this is a place where I'm going to stay. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere else. It was almost like something deep down kind of was like, if I can get through this uncomfortableness, then I can really grow in this environment one day. And I just know it's like probably not right now. But it's like that feeling of like, why is it that all of a sudden everyone, like the girls that I came with, like stomach bug, random day flu, what? It was like, <laughs> it was literally so weird. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, so I'm gonna go there on my own then in this big city. And, and, and that's ironic because then I literally went there and moved there on my own in this big city <laughs> i mean that is I, I like when you said that you had like a deep feeling or so mm. about like feeling like all right this is going to be the place i'm going to live mm. in because i had like a similar feeling actually yeah. coming to uh berlin i mean i wanted to know yeah so um I, you know i kind of i don't know if i shared it before on this but the reason why i moved out here was uh initially because of stand-up comedy yeah you know mm -hmm. so you know, it was me and a friend of mine. We we're traveling around. We we're doing some uh, comedy in uh, some other cities around Europe. Uh, went to uh, Paris, went to Luxembourg, and uh, not Luxembourg, but Amsterdam, Rotterdam. Came to Berlin, went back to Paris. He went to London. I went back to Berlin. And it was just like me being in these countries, in these cities, and then it's more specifically Berlin, a lot longer than all the other places. And it felt similar to like New York City, but like in a different way. And the comedy scene was like, it's new. 
So it was also mm-hmm. kind of like, wow, I'm beginning to see comedy like in a new form or something. Oh, and wow. then it just, yeah, it was something where, you know, somebody convinced me to move out here. So basically there's two comedians who were like, hey, so when are you going to move out here? Because I was doing pretty good out here. And it's like, and I was like, how do I move here? I don't know. How, I don't even know how to even, I, this is my first time here. I've never wow. been in Berlin up to that point. Wow. And it was like, hey, you can get the artist visa. And then. I remember you saying that. Right. So, the, you know. That's the, huge, actually. Very huge. Very huge. It told me yeah. the artist visa, the process, you know, more people start telling me about it. And it was just a momentum of like, all right, this is something that you should probably take advantage of. Because people are literally telling you, you should move here. And then here's the ways to do it. Oh, that's unprecedented. Yeah. It's not every day that people are like, let me help you with that path forward. You know, it's like you weren't left to your own devices. You were able to like have guidance and navigating a really hard system. Yeah. And also you got the opportunity for like that outlet, but in a creative like capacity. That too. Yeah. That's incredible. It was, it was not, not even still thinking about it. It was crazy. Like I, it, cause even when I went back to New York city, I always had like the, my brain was always out here in Berlin and other places. I'm so happy it was. Yeah. I would have never met you and I'm getting to know you. I don't know you so well, but like how ironic that like you ended up here and like the people that brought you here, like, you right. know, it's like, crazy. So that's why I resonate with that. Yeah. That like, you know, you had a deep feeling and mm-hmm. you just like, all right, this is the place where I'm gonna stay. So I, I really like that you you mentioned that. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so when you was in London, I mean, what was like the what what did you do when you got there? Like, what was your thing? Was it art? Was it like in some mm. profession? Like, so actually, when I officially was like, it's happening, um, and you know, three piles sell, <laughs> donate, all rubbish. Right. Um, so like, Loki, I did that again, and um, I came for graduate school. I got accepted into like one of my dream graduate schools, SOAS, the University of London. Mm. And it's like more of a privatized art kind of school, a, a creative kind of, I wouldn't say underground, but it's like not in the same normal traditional standards. It doesn't follow the same kind of conviction as like other schools do. They have literally a master's in like yoga practice and meditation. So it's got such a specialty. Right. And I loved that about it because they are always trying to fight the system. So it's a little bit like anarchist kind of. Uh-huh. And I love the on the not the status quo, you know, being on the other side of the things that like maybe you are the different person in the room. Like, so what? Tap into that. And that school allows for that outlet. So I, I went there to continue to study gender and women's rights and international development work. Um, And when I got accepted, they were like, awesome, you're gonna be doing political economics. And I was like, hold on, did I sign up right? You know, (laughs) I was like, wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Wait, hold on, none of that is what I just said, you know? And they're like, no, 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 this discipline, you have to choose like a specialty. And I was like, oh, I wanna do women's rights, like women's studies with international development and they were like mm, you can't really choose that one that's like a more of a side class and they were like you can go under these like three guides mm-hmm. and you have to choose one and like we've kind of chosen this one for you political economics and i was like okay guess that's been chosen for me and my mom so lovely she's like you've always been good at economics and i'm just like thanks mom i'm gonna die i'm gonna die out there in in these big streets in london these big streets of london doing a master's in economics oh my jeez and that's an economic town right there yeah i'm like okay so maybe i should go to london school of economics and i considered but i never ended up applying Mm -hmm. and i was like let's just go with where it feels right And so I did my master's in international development, political economics, with a little guys, little sprinkle of that gender and women's studies. Wow. So you, okay. So you really came out like with the big stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you was working out there in London too? Yeah. So actually I, uh, not at first, it was just like focused on the studies and had my fun. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You got to. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And um, and then also once it, this was coming up to a wrap, mm-hmm. I wrote the school 
And I was like, so yeah, I want to work. And um, how does that work? Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm on a student visa at the time. Oh. And they were like, yeah, we can, we can, we can work something out. So I just applied like a normal person for any job, and wow. I got a job opportunity, and it just was like incredible. It wasn't necessarily even in my field; it was something I've done before. I tapped into a skill that I've had before in order to stay and work and be useful and just like continue to like be in my new home because mm -hmm. I was really just like it was becoming me. It became me, mm. and so yeah, I was like working there, and then. Uh, this place uh, that was extraordinary people and bosses and everything. Um, later, I was like, okay, well, like now all of this is coming to an end. What what should I do? And the the company, um, a small um, small business kind of, they were like, actually, we'll try to sponsor you, so you can like continue and like stay. Wow. And I like all this time I'm having flats, you know, like living on my own or a flatmate or just like a actual ass life paying taxes. Like this is all after master school. I did like it was like a fast track, like master school one year. Oh, well, so you was really, really studying and like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's serious. So then that's when I was like when everyone else was kind of low key stressing about our dissertations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that. I did that. I also traveled and I wrote and I love writing. So I was like writing and I was traveling and I was applying for jobs. <laughs> right. I was like, so I'm freaking like, do, 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 yeah. Yeah. like at night I'd be like, this job? No. Yeah, this job, this job. Oh, Literally, yeah. I was like so focused. I was not going to give up my flat. I was not going to give up my life, my friends. I was like, hell no. So when they said they would sponsor me after a year in working with that job, mm -hmm. I was like, live in La Vida Loca and was so grateful. And um, then this thing that I studied called Brexit came true. Oh, yeah. And that put a absolute stop on any opportunity because then they said, oh, but you're not British enough. We could just find any British person to continue to do this work. Oh, so that affected, so that Brexit basically affected you because then they thought you was not British enough for some of these like jobs or? Yeah, they said that based on how it works now, even though this company is willing to sponsor me, um, they would have to prove not one British British national could do that job. Mm. Which, that is insanely painful to hear. Right. After all that I've done and contributed and, it, the education and the money spent on everything, like putting it into their system and paying the taxes and never abusing any of it to be told, oh, but like if we find one other British person, then they could get it. And therefore you have no opportunity here in this country. Ooh, that's... And so you're up against like nothing anymore. Like you're just up against what the, the entire system you're up against. The whole population right i mean the discrimination about that statement alone can we find a german to do it like oh you know that would just be so like <gasps> too soon too soon yeah. <laughs> how german are they yeah too soon, too that's soon, yeah too soon. that's a different oh that's a trick yeah cause, i mean that that just kind of opens the door for a lot of discrimination to happen right absolutely yeah that is uh that is a difficult one wow yeah so then at the time, also all of a sudden, there was a rumor that like this person named Trump that I remember from The Apprentice Show <sighs> is going to be the president. I'm still living in London. I'm still working the job. And and then I'm like calling immigration being like, so what's happening? What can I do? Where can I be? Because this is like all starting to kind of come to an end, right? Mm. If like a British a person could do my job, then I'm going to be made irrelevant because like, how many population there's like i don't even remember the number like 70 million people there i don't even know and i was like okay so like clearly you're saying no in other ways you know um and the immigration officer said oh unlucky hon you've got trump in america and you've got brexit here and he literally was like you're low-key screwed where are you gonna go what are you gonna do Wow. And then I was like, well, I was born in peace in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's kind of what led you back into uh, Germany. Eventually. Eventually. The openness of like being able to be here and have like 
somewhat of a path yeah. to make it, even if you don't know exactly what that would look like. Mm. That's open enough for me to be like, okay, that feels like I could be wanted. Right. Yeah. So before we get into that part of you being here in Germany and you do, you're doing some dope stuff here, I kind of saw what you've been doing here. Oh, thanks. Um, is that so? This this London accent, right? Would that would. <laughs> So when you first got there, was this something you had or so? Or like how long you was there in London for this like accent? Because it's very like one would assume that you've been there for a long time. This with based on this accent you have. So, I mean, on and off, on and off, sometimes more on than off and sometimes more off than on. Eight years. So eight years it took for you to on get like the off. actual because, you know, it even sounds like it's almost like sort of your default. I, I kind of want to talk to you. Like mm. the, the accent just comes out mm. and it's like, wow, this is so interesting. Like at first the American come up, but then like when you start getting comfortable, like I hear like the London accent and I'm mm. like, wow, this is so interesting. Cause that's mm. a, it's kind of a tough accent to kind of have. Maybe mm. I'm speaking for myself. Cause I tried to, you know, sorry, London people, but uh, <laughs> I try to do it at times and it doesn't sound good. Um, but yeah, was that something, did you notice like as you was kind of like living there that you started developing the accent? Did you try to start speaking that way or how did? It... Oh, I always hate this topic, <laughs> but I'll, oh, I'll do this for you. Okay. That's <laughs> what I'm not... Only for you. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's so much more to it. Like, you know, being raised in international schools, you know, starting on those like DOD kind of schools and you're not just hearing, you don't hear this traditional or what is traditional what's the status quo or or um standard american sound you don't you hear what you hear you hear people that have lived everywhere maybe they have just moved from england maybe they've just moved from japan you hear and i'm an auditory learner so i'm hearing sounds of the kids around me mm -hmm. and my parents also have really neutral accents my mom sometimes even slips into like sounding british but she was never like living there um it's just in some of her words also in some of my family members it's just like the words that they say and like where they lived and their influences i've got an aunt that we are also swedish in our, our family history uh, and she lived in sweden and her her english doesn't sound like how people want it to sound like because she lives in dallas texas they're not hearing that they're like ah, 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 i can't place it my dad as well my whole life, everyone's like, where's he from? <laughs> so when I'm always only ever hearing just the sounds that I've become accustomed to hearing, that informs you. And then I guess eventually when some influences are a bit more than others, when you're studying in that culture, when you're working in that culture, eventually I married in that culture, reunited with family of my own in that culture family that I didn't know in the States that I um, reunited with in London. When all of these extra influences are there on top of how you already just sounded like you existed and no one could really place your, your sounds. Um, yeah, it will just start to kind of shape some of your words and the sounds. And then what's so ironic beyond being married to a Londoner, um, he was like born and raised or whatever, because everyone's like, oh, it was this. She was married to a British husband. He was, I'm so sorry. Harry was very lovely, but I can't give him all the credit. I can't just be like, yep, that was it. That was, that's why. No, because of everything else that I've said, you know, all the other influences that led up to that point in my life. And, and yes, hearing his accent every single day was, um, it informs you as it would, but it doesn't for some people. You know, some people have British spouses and they don't sound British and mm. others do. It's also in what I'm watching, you know, what I'm literally like my like, again, I was younger and so obsessed with aspects of the culture and the literature. And so many of the things that I would read that I would hear were British. Oh. And so it's like it was literally so weird, like when it was actually happening to me, it was never tried. It was never put on. Um, actually, uh, I would put on an accent on purpose, which is more of a Kentucky sound at the University of Kentucky to fit in. That I was trying to put on, but I don't have a Southern twang. I've never had one. I don't have that kind of like Southern uh, 
that little Kentucky charm. But like, don't hate me, don't come for me. But I was putting it on because I was a bit more on the public, uh, like a public figure at university with some work that I did as a, a student leader. And I was putting that on because I wanted to like, you know, be like, oh, of course, like this makes sense. Like it makes sense that she's, she's in that position. Mm-hmm. If I sound like I'm one of them, mm. but I never have actually. And that was like, kind of like, that's my confession. I do remember being like, so then any, everyone, <laughs> I don't, I can't even like do it anymore. But some friends that remember me like, from there they're like if they really knew me they knew that wasn't really my actual sound uh you can put that on but uh it kind of would confuse them now right because they would be like wait a second but when you were on these like university podcasts you would be like and it's me and so and so just here and trying to inform you about the academia and like i was like just trying to like yeah oh wow um but yeah, but one thing I will say is, um, I mean, I was even taught by British uh, instructors in Spain, um, you know, DOD school probably as well. Uh, again, my parents, their sounds, um, though they're not full on British in any way, but their words are more like old English words, you know, and how, and how they sound. My mom says, again, she literally only says, again. Wow. Yeah. So all these things and um, my aunts, they lovingly always defend me. Like Lawrence never sounded like she's from where people want her to be from. We don't have family in Georgia other than like one, two cousins, but we're not from there. And they're like, she's never sounded like how people want her to be like Atlanta or whatever. Um, And then I moved to Germany and I realized, oh my God, it's only going to get worse my sound is only going to make every it's going to be worse here because when i'm speaking in english of so many germans they learned from a british english teacher that's the closest relation like that they have in their schools to learning english is typically someone that speaks british english and not necessarily american english all the way in berlin Mm. so when we're speaking english they're sounding more british than i sound but they're german and I'm not questioning everything about them, but I'm like, it's going to make this more complicated, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of uh, layers to that in terms of like, uh, you know, the the not only the English you speak, but then like uh, the ones that you try to like kind of acquiesce to during, mm-hmm. based on where you was at, mm-hmm. um, which I think like as a mm-hmm. third culture kid, I mean, that's like a common thing, right? Mm-hmm. You're just trying to sound like the people around you so you don't draw too much attention. Mm-hmm. and then. Also, too, just dealing with the what is your true tone or so mm-hmm. like that in your language, mm-hmm. which I think that's always like always like a battle. And I, mm. <laughs> I'm also glad you said like I hate this question because like <laughs> it is yeah. it is yeah I mean because also too for example I'm sorry uh, no no it's cool for example um you know me born in America but mm. I have uh, parents from West Africa Liberia so right, like Liberian American. so right. So, um, you know, and like where my family from is, uh, you know, because like Liberia is, a, you know, West African country, you know, in quotes founded by, you know, American slaves, right. um, you know, it has existed, though. So like basically the way my family speaks is different. It's English, but it's different than the English spoken in America. So like, mm. you know, even when I was growing up, the way I spoke English was severely different, mm. you know. Um, what is the different sound like? Um, it's almost, it's almost difficult is uh, people have asked me to do it and it's hard for me to like sharply do the main differences. It's almost have to slip into it. Like if I talk to another African person, it's, it's like, a, it's like almost like a media. My brain just drops into it. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. either that, or if I'm shocked about something, if I'm shocked about something, it will come out like something like shocking happen. It would be like, what? Like, you know, if like, <laughs> yeah. if like, if like, whoa, whoa, you know, if like, if like whoa, 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 what's that? What are the thing you do? You know, like. Be, they're like, whoa, 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 go back. Go yeah, back, go back. yeah, like basically override whatever thing has been in my mind in terms of like, because, you know, sometimes when you talk a certain way, you ask more questions. Sometimes you're trying to get to the point of things. Be like, yeah, but well, where that? Just tell me about your tone and where it comes from. But like, look, I'm trying to tell you what to do so then we can get this thing done. Yeah. yeah but no, let's sit here. And you're like, yeah. ah, let, I'm trying to tell a story. Let's. So Absolutely. I, I get where you're coming from with yeah. like that. And you are, you know, that that um stereotype you are who you are when no one's looking Mm -hmm. 
So it's like, people are like, do you hear how you sound, right? Well, I've been trying to be more conscious of my own sound lately because everyone's asking me. And, um, and then I'm like, oh shit, it's worse. It sounds more like Downton Abbey when I'm at home. <laughs> and it's like, Carnegie, get some water. And it's just like, sounds so drawn out. Like, and yeah. that's like, I'm like, oh God, is that who I really am deep down? It's more like, is this actually me? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's shit. more concerning because it sounds like I'm trying to at least sound a little bit more up with the kids and like, yeah, you know, have like a little bit of slang to me or whatever, like normal. But at home, I'm feeling like, I'm like, Carnegie, when's our butler coming? You know, and I'm just like, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, but that's you, though. You know, and that's dope. Apparently, you know? apparently. Yeah, I mean, you know, there you go. Even the way you said bloody hell, I couldn't do that. You know, that's a that's a real, that's comf- that's you. <laughs> no, but that's I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you said that though because I think for a lot of people they need to know that you know that it, it's there's different layers with how you speak uh, mm. English you know or how you express yourself. Right, right, you know? absolutely. And also, then you know you think like, you know, what's your new context? Like, how will that inform you? How will your time in Berlin and the sounds that you're hearing like inform you? And because I hear when people say one thing I've been hearing is like. When you leave here, they're like, huh, because you're hearing German, sometimes maybe even trying to speak it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, how how do you show up in that language? How do you sound when you're trying to speak mm. the language? Or now when you're trying to speak your default, which is English, that will probably start to sound a little bit different because you're not always just only hearing English 24-7 necessarily. Sometimes you are just hearing the hello, you know, like, those little sounds will start to slip in to how you even say your traditional hello, hello. Right. You'll just like gradually sound different like through time. And that's yeah. weird. Very weird. It, that's crazy. Cause it's like, wait a second, hold on. I'm not even speaking like full blown Deutsch uh, all day, nothing like this. But then it's like, oh no, this is informing how <laughs> how I sound even in my English words. I can't imagine a, a beautiful bilingualness. Like, oh, it'd be so, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? At least to balance out like whatever's happening to your English. And then yeah. just be like, all right, let me, this is because I speak this language. Yeah. But it's just like, nah, I'm just here. Yeah. Literally. Do you speak that language? Nah, I don't speak it. German. <laughs> It's like worse when you're like, no, I'm not bilingual. I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm just confused. <laughs> and people are like, what? You, s- but you're an English speaker, and it's like, I just like, I forgot what I wanted to say in my own language. Oh, just don't make me talk. Yeah. You know. Or when I personally, for me, when I go back to England, oh my god, little, oh my god, my friends and family a little bit, but they're like not as like loud about it Mm -hmm. my friends though they're like you sound different Mm -hmm. and then they're like is that german she sounds like is that english she sounds like is that and they like can't pinpoint it and then i'm like what what what, what, what's different what do i sound like because i'm constantly going back there you know to Mm -hmm. england so i'm like how does this sound different than last year oh god (laughs) <laughs> wow that yeah. is so interesting you bring that up yeah because you you don't know how you really sound unless other people you don't know how you sound to yourself but you don't know how you sound to other people mm-hmm. so that adds like a different like you know contextual uh difficulty right mm-hmm. you're like ah, i don't know how i sound even the way i sound now when i was visiting friends in, in uh london and mm-hmm. they came from new york city oh. I, I actually felt my voice changing a little bit because out here i have to talk a little bit slower because you know mm. english is not the first language and on top of it too, when you when you live in New York for a while, you tend to start speaking faster. East Coast mm, in general, that's true. So you know, I used to speak fast. And I remember going to yeah, going to see my friends. They speak faster and everything. So like being just dropping back in mm, and like talking dropping fast, talking in. the way I used to talk and stuff. I like that. And then coming back here, it was like I, I had to adjust a little bit. And I was like, oh yeah, because I started seeing people's faces. They kind of like, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm speaking way too fast. Let me go ahead and you know come back down a little bit. That's you know, so right. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Even the tonality. The tonality, the, the tonality, words you're using. The pitch. Yeah. Ev- everything is so everything. important. Yeah, absolutely. Like where where I work now, I only, and it's like so ironic because it's like, this is just my life now. <laughs> well, 
my first like proper job in Berlin, like the more like nine to five on a salary payroll situation, mm -hmm. um, that was a British company mm. with a a new, somewhat newer German presence. So our working language was English because it was a British company, even though we're in Germany. But that's like kind of exciting because you can feel useful to still continue to speak your native language and feel like a healthy amount of encouragement to try to speak German because your clientele might be like you're seeing a German person that day and you want to you wanna try, you know. Um, but then for all the things that like matter or that make you nervous or being like, oh, no, now like I've really got to switch to my default. Oh, that was all English because the whole company is English. Yeah. So I was like, nice. And now currently I work for the reverse. I work for a German based company. And but my clientele is all British peoples. Wow. So now it's with the legality, the things that matter, mm -hmm. you know, like who's signing your paychecks and all of this kind of vibe. That's all Deutsch. But my day to day and how I have to conduct myself for work and who I'm speaking to, what I'm speaking to them about. This is all on only hearing British English. Sometimes Scotland, Scottish. Yeah. Oh wow. So you, yeah, you kind of deal with all the different type of tonalities of English. Mm -hmm. That is a uh, huh. So now it's like I haven't left it. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like now German company but working only for the Brits, British company but working for the Germans, and it's like, <laughs> that's a that is a flip. So you out here in Berlin, you are, you know, obviously you talked about the job you work at, but mm -hmm. also too, you are part of two uh, big projects out here, two big mm -hmm. organizations. If you want to mm -hmm. talk about that, share a little bit about it. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, well, which ones are? Here? I think the ones called Review or yeah. Oh Revenue. Revenue. There nice, you go. Yes. Nice. Yeah. 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 Um. So Revenue started with my best friend and I out here to um kind of take some of the power back and kind of make more curated events that are women-led, women-run, women-focused um, for the communities in which we often were serving in, which were more like women in tech, um, uh, black women in Berlin, Latinas in Alemania, like all these different beautiful sets of, of groups that are still, unfortunately, we're, we're still marginalized as like, you know, um, a person that identifies as a female, not much else if you identify as anything else, then it's like also a continued marginalization. So we wanted to continue to spotlight, you know, the, the voices that still aren't getting heard enough or not on equal playing fields. So women in fashion, you think that it's like, of course, like women in fashion, like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But like there's still like not enough representation at the top especially the people that are actually making the decisions for within the fashion industry oftentimes are still not uh women in business really it's still like we're not having all the same equal representations of the seats at the table mm. so we started this um events agency to be like here are the seats that we want to invite everyone to the same table and and that's been really cool to to kind of have our own name behind it this time and and not only represent our ideas but under a different guise. Mm, okay. Because before that was a lot of like our individual ideas and putting together events, but under a guise of like our other workplaces or other community groups that we support. But now it's like, oh no, oh my gosh, like with great power comes responsibility. <laughs> like, let's put this together. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's dope. That's dope. Thank and you. and what and what's the other one that you have? Um, so it's, it's Yeah. Are you referring to Faces for Equality? Yes. Ah, nice. Um, so that one is my little baby from the US. Um, and I started that during the pandemic. And that one has been really ex exciting uh, because during the pandemic, in the moment of, of course, like the whole world halt and stop and lockdown, I still got to um, feel connected to people all around the world, most in which I had never met before, to put a spotlight on their story, mm. to hear what it is that they're doing about a 
inhumane uh, or injustice, an inhumane act in life or an injustice. And like, what is your part? What are you playing in it to make this world a better place? And I'm going to spotlight the individual faces behind equality movements. And from there, I got to do lots of different interviews with companies and people. And I mean, just the most extraordinary kind of stories and people that I got to like interview and have this like this intimate moment with Mm -hmm. to have them showcase their story that otherwise maybe isn't getting heard and overshadowed by all the bad news you know of politics and so forth Mm. um the divisiveness and so this was really cool to see um how far your reach can be even from the comfort of your own home (laughs) like this that's why i'm so excited for like that you do this and oh thank you you bring together people's stories and let them like have a moment it's so nice it's so so nice thank you thank yeah. you very much for that thank you yeah and those are two those are two big things you're doing out here and uh you know i'm pretty sure you're making a big impact with each of those things um you know revenue and then the other one is uh faces for equality faces for equality that's sweet yeah so yeah. one thing i always like to ask people this is my last question i have mm-hmm. for you Um, so you've been through multiple different cultures in your life, you know, going from, um, you know, being born in, uh, Germany near Frankfurt, uh, then moving to, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, not not Nashville, sorry, Tennessee. You want me to be in Tennessee. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, Tennessee, but then you I've never lived in Tennessee. I thought you said, I thought you said Tennessee, no? Or Georgia? No, I've never lived in Tennessee. My dad's from Tennessee. Your dad's from Tennessee. I apologize. Sorry. Okay. Okay, So from (laughs) Germany. To Georgia. Yeah. From mm-hmm. Georgia, sorry. That's Georgia. Ooh, from Germany to Georgia. The yeah. two G's. The two G's, yeah. You yeah. know, double G's and I was okay. Yeah. So from there and then like, you know, going to Spain, then like these other places in Germany, then London, then being there, then Brexit. So there's, there's been like a lot of different cultural changes you experienced. Mm-hmm. So if you used to go back and you if you used to tell your younger self something, like some words of advice, what would be that? Oh, cool. Oh, I like it. Thank you for the yeah. question. Um. Hmm. Well, b- one thing I should mention before I answer this properly, I've also lived in Washington D.C. and and then of course Kentucky, like I mentioned. Okay. Um. But also I've lived in the Middle East before. Oh, I've lived wow. in Jordan and um, I'm on Jordan, and I've lived in Lebanon as well. And that's mm-hmm. like part of that was more the kind of work that I was was have been doing most of my life a young adult life my career life or whatever my vocation um because in jordan i worked with the united nations and um and lebanon with a local organization and always only to serve refugees because before it i was also working with refugees at the university and in my jobs and career path and stuff like this so like though that doesn't usually i'm telling people more now um i'm like I lived there like I let's you know like I love the Palestinians and this is a ap- absolute travesty with what's occurring. I'm speaking about it more now actually. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't always fit into the quick born in Germany, raised in America, a lot of time in London. That's my quickest spiel, you know. Yeah. But then it's like but I also lived in Spain in the Middle East and uh, Washington, D.C. And then, then, then it's like, OK, like I, maybe I should just shut up. I don't no, really know you. You I, don't know I, me. I, like, let's not go there. I think I think that's very important for you to share that, especially Aww. during your time in the Middle East and everything, because that's an Thanks. impactful time. And, yeah. like, you know, with all that's going on right now, yeah. I think it's important for people to know, like, just other people's experience mm-hmm. of the Middle East, you know, because it just it, it just yeah. adds like a tapestry of just like knowledge mm-hmm. about it. Uh, from like different that. perspectives and then it kind of creates like this nice web of like uh knowledge which knowledge understanding of experiences and then mm. um hopefully through that some empathy and like mm. uh more uh awareness about like what's going on in the history of things that are happening in the world absolutely so i think it's yeah i think whenever yeah. you i mean whenever you want whatever you want to or whatever platform or so um i definitely suggest that even if you want to come back or so like that by all means you know if you want to talk about that aspect but Thanks. i'm just happy you at least shared that part of it so that's nice hopefully that that's a that's a one dot that you have put there in the universe and hopefully that connects in different ways for that to um be brighter that 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 little spark that you added thank you yeah yeah and so i appreciate you saying that 
So like basically to answer then your question, the one thing I would tell my younger self it was mm-hmm. is kind of on that that strain of like that line of logic that you were stating. And I like how you use the words like the tapestry. Like that's so cool. I'm just picturing <laughs> like all the the patterns and <laughs> the mm-hmm. layers. Oh my God. Um I would tell my younger self that um continue to not just focus on the uncomfortableness of being in rooms and spaces to where you don't see representation and where you might naturally think you don't belong mm. but continue to know that you deserve to take up space you deserve to also be there to also do the work, to share your story, to give light to a situation, to go beyond your wildest imaginations of a location or, you know, um, an exchange with someone. Like, it's okay to feel like you can be in the thing that you don't ever see. And, And I would tell my younger self that because... I'm really grateful that my parents always raised my sister and I to not allow that to be a setback. Mm -hmm. Even though in public school, my surroundings, they made it so black versus white, black versus white. Mm. And if I just continue to tell myself that, then like, like I could just go all the distance, you know, like literally like keep doing it. And sometimes I feel that sometimes I'm like, bolder than I ever thought I would be because deep down I don't feel this way about myself I feel like there's so much outer body I feel shy I feel like because I grew up like being more internal not as external extroverted and all these things I grew up more to here closer to the heart so if I could tell my younger self like it's okay you can continue to be that little girl that you might just be the only one, but there will be others like to follow. And and you can also see this, you know, you can find people to kind of allow that path, like how you got to Germany mm-hmm. and guide you forward. And yeah, I hope this makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, I'm not, I mean, that's, and to see, and, and to have a conversation with you now, like being at, like, you sound like a very, you're, you, you sound like an extroverted person to me, like you, mm-hmm. that energy. So to hear that, you know, in the past you're introverted to where you are now, it really shows mm-hmm. like the journey that mm-hmm. you went through from like that point till now. And you just sharing your story and all the things you've been through. I think mm-hmm. it's going to really like resonate with a lot of people in oh. terms of being in that place of introvertness to right. now being extroverted. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. My mom, my, my, I'm always talking about my mom, <laughs> mm-hmm. but my mom's like, I hate when you say that out loud, you know, like you're feeling shy because I think that she, she knows how badly I worked on that mm-hmm. and she doesn't want like, she doesn't want me to put that out there. Like almost like that could be like seen as a setback or like, um, or I don't really know. I can't really speak to what my mom would think on this, but. She doesn't like when I'm like, oh, I feel shy now. I don't feel, I feel, uh, it's kind of like I'm reverting back in some ways to feeling certain ways. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, 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 no. But it's probably because she just like saw like my broken heart of just, you know, different experiences, saying goodbye, Mm. being the new one again, trying to find a new beginning, a new belonging over and over and over and like, Thank God I didn't break. I just adapted to what I saw in front of me, which was, okay, they look like they are somebody going somewhere. And I know I am somebody and I know I will be going somewhere, but I'm so shy. How do I get there? How do I give and exude that confidence that's in front of me? So I adapted my personality to be the person that like could also take the mic and like be like i can speak mm. because before absolutely not wow that is oh so you've been through a journey for real because you, <laughs> 
Because, I mean, you've been dropping some, you know, you've been dropping some fire. You've been flexing a little bit even. <laughs> that, that ain't no shy activity right there. You was flexing. You, you, you had, like, some childhood flexing, too. So some you, childhood flexing. You well, have that's why good. she doesn't like when I say, I'm feeling shy. She's like, oh, we're not going back yeah, there. So, 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 you've, you've been in university since you was a child. Yeah, yeah, literally. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> My baby is a university child. No <laughs> university child should be shy in this house. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She's like, don't do that to yourself. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not oh, today. Shit. Today we're not gonna go there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, look, so sorry, sorry to your mother for <laughs> putting you in this uh, vulnerable state. But um <laughs> but no, I really had a great time talking with you and thank you very much for sharing your stuff. Thank you. Thank you. You're just so wonderful. Thank this you. Is so wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no this problem. Is so cool. Yeah, and shout out to your dog too. His dog's asleep right now. Oh, dog yeah. just like sleep on the side. But uh, that's he'll neither. be my he'll be my special guest next time. There you go. Yeah, he's, he's there in presence. He's there in presence. Yeah, I'm not just talking at the floor, guys. He's actually there. But <laughs> uh, but all right, guys. Thank you very much for listening and or watching. My this is Nyan Yenifin, Third Culture Talk Podcast. I see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs> Can't believe it's recorded. <laughs>